Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. Davy Squires. Hello and welcome to the Squires Station. I am your host, Davy Squires, and this episode is presented by Area 67 Studios here in Akron, Ohio. And on this episode, I have singer, songwriter, Tina Marie. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. What have you, you been up to? What's going on? Oh my goodness. You're picking up things from the side of the road? like. <laughs> well, it was just, it was a random, it was a random just surprise in my day. <laughs> I'm always keeping my eyes open for, you know, for opportunities for treasures you know yeah, you, you never know how much that stuff is worth like, and it's worth so much it would have been such a shame to to have to have lost them to to the to the trash men right <laughs> right i mean but there but there are th- but there are things that people are really <laughs> going to treasure they're really special oh, yeah. really special things oh yeah yeah definitely i'm excited to share them well, before we get started here, I just want to say, Mike provided the water. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike, for the Dasane and the Math food the club. <laughs> food club. Is that Walmart? Wait. I think they sell that all over the place. Is yes, it, you are correct. Is it really a club? <laughs> that's a... That's a pretty good question, I think. I don't think it's a club. <laughs> I don't think it's a club. I love you. You're a member. This is a drink, though. It's not a food. It's not in the club. It's a well. lie. Um, so what have you been working on lately, music-wise? I've been finally putting it together, and I'm so, so pleased. I'm so thankful for my friend Dallas, Dallas Baldwin. He's just a tremendous talent and such a great help. He's he's been able to to pull it all together for me. I, I've been I've been working on I, I've been preparing for the whole songwriting experience all my life. Mm-hmm. I, it's kind of ridiculous how much work I've put into it and how how hard I've been on myself, how high my expectations have been. I've done so much more homework than I ever needed to, but music is so is so huge and so important to me and has been so powerful in my life. Mm-hmm. It, I felt it to be a privilege yeah. to write music, and, and it's a responsibility, I feel. I, I grew up the daughter of musicians, and my parents, my mother primarily, they're so impressive, and they're so accomplished, and they gave me such a, a beautiful, beautiful life. I, I had the privilege of sitting in the front row watching my mom open up for all the stars in country music, Charlie Daniels, Toby Keith, <laughs> Um, Dixie Chick, Shania Twain. Is there so many, all of them? And having had that privilege of, of getting to know these people and and experiencing their music on, on such a personal level, I I would study all of their music before the show and make sure that I deserved that conversation. Yeah, yeah. And I grew up in the country. I, I grew up on, I think, 250 acres, something like that, on top of the hill. You know, it's the family, all of mm-hmm. different members of the family, but collectively it was that much. You know, we could see three towns we couldn't get to in less than 15 minutes drive. And, and it was just me and my mom and stepdad. I had a whole lot of time to myself. And, you know, we all... We all experience pain and difficult times, I think, in our lives. And 
music is what what softened my heart back up and it's what it's what helped me to understand how big God's love is and how big a heart can feel and the power that that music holds it's it's incredible and I wanted to be able to heal people's hearts and fix the broken pieces the way that all of these other artists have done for me so I did all all the homework I could come up with yeah <laughs> they uh I, I was once called a, a new age hippie gypsy funk rock princess, which I figured out was a seven word soliloquy. That's, <laughs> quite a, a that's another funny story. But I've done a lot more homework <laughs> than that, though. I'm really more of like a mm-hmm. new age hippie gypsy funk rock Rastafarian Zydeco bluegrass <laughs> rock and roll R and B little gangster rap sometimes some death metal backwoods country gospel rock and roll princess. I guess <laughs> I've done so much, so much homework. I just love. I love the variety of music that's available and I love I love how each genre can make you feel a different way and being an artist I'm sure that you can understand the the emotional attachment if you allow yourself to be so vulnerable mm-hmm. <laughs> that the journey that, that that music can take you on, if you let yourself go emotionally into it, I mean, it, it takes me on such a roller coaster, you know, from tears to joy to anger to, it, it's cool. Oh yeah, definitely. It, it, it can definitely invoke a lot of emotion, like a lot yeah. of different types of emotion. Yeah. So, um, getting it, get, like, so, so you're getting your music together. Yes. What does that mean? to you well before I would allow myself to enter into the creation of an album I felt that I needed to decide what my message is what I wanted to say how I wanted to make people feel and what presence I would like to be yeah in the world of music and in people's lives. And once you've created a song, then you have to be prepared and willing to perform that over and over and over again. So I could have written and created a a million sad songs that would make everyone cry and (laughs) really, really hit them deep. I've got that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I could write all the songs that would get a person worked up from anger and angst. I just, I don't want to, I don't want to sing those songs or feel that way over and over again. So I'm going to take all of the sad and all of the painful and all of the difficult experiences that I've come through and, and jump on top of them. And use all of that as as fuel for regaining your strength and getting getting yourself to a good day. Yeah. You know, I, I just want to lift people up and make them want to dance and smile. So that's that's what we're working on is just yeah just. Writing the songs, that part's easy. Yeah. <laughs> All we got to do is, is get Dallas on the guitar and, you know, lay out, lay out a melody there. And the words are just so easy to... Mm-hmm. So what's, like, what's, what's, your, what's your process when you're going to write lyrics? Is it, like, how you're feeling on that given day or...? Uh, not so much, no. It's, um, it's more purposeful. It's... Um, I, I've decided what what I want to do. Yeah, I've decided how I want to come across, and and I want I want to give explanation of 
all the reasons to celebrate instead Mm -hmm. and remind myself and those who, I guess, find bits of themselves in my music I, that, that they are enough, that I am enough, that, that we are enough, that everything can be okay, that, that there is plenty of love and that there's no need to cry about it or be mad about it. So I, I don't really let my, my day influence what I'm writing so much at least yeah. not if I'm having a bad day I I won't let it I won't let it own me that way mm -hmm. does it usually make you well if you're if you're having hypothetically a bad day if does writing help you get out of that well, completely yeah. completely that's cool so what music are you guys have you guys been writing I know you you said you 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 grew up listening to more country stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, honestly, I, I feel like, I feel like Dallas would probably be able to explain it a little, a little bit better. Um, I'm, I'm not so much an instrumentalist. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I play actually a bunch of instruments, but <laughs> Dallas, the, the, get over here. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like he, he if, should if you be want in to here. Explain it. You know, <laughs> but, but I really, I want more of like a, a reggae beach kind of a kind of a vibe, you know, with a, yeah, you know, the like a swing. Yeah, I like those Latin rhythms and yeah, um, those happy notes. You know, I don't want a lot of I don't want a lot of flats in there. Mm. <laughs> Um, no minor keys. No minors. Thank you. Yeah. That's what I meant. <laughs> see it. All majors. I got. I got to. No yeah, I got to brush up on my my theory. I did. You know, I I did actually have all of that knowledge really, <laughs> really mm -hmm. packed in there. You know, after being a part of the band all my life. You know, mm -hmm. I started playing the flute when I was six, and you know, I, it can. I mean, it can slip and then come back and it's like yeah well i've studied too many things you know you can only hold, hold so much knowledge in your mind at a time so yeah. you know I, I know thousands of songs but sometimes i need the words to reference just to bring it back because there are so many on top of it i'm a massage therapist and it, to pass that state medical board examination it's it's insane it's an eight hour exam <laughs> you're gonna know your stuff <laughs> oh my goodness all the way down to cell physiology it's incredibly incredibly oh. intense yeah you get you know, a minute and a half per question, three out of four answers are correct, but one is the most correct. It's, it's yeah. really, oh it was, God. it was a 42% pass rate when I took my boards, you know, so I had to push all of that knowledge out to, to <laughs> and then put that knowledge. Yeah. In. <laughs> but, and, and then once, you know, once I started getting back to the stage, I had <laughs> to make room yeah. for those lyrics and those, okay, what key is that? Oh my goodness. What are the chords? Son of a gun. You know, it's, <laughs> it's yeah. a real, it's a real juggling act Can sometimes. So much knowledge. Jeez. Right. You it's know, like, you can only keep it at the ready. You can only keep so much yeah. at the ready. It's all there. You know, you just got to yeah. kind of, you got to get it from get the us, back of the mind. You got to steal it up. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. How'd you get into that? The, the massage therapy thing. I was in a, a really bad car accident when I was 17. Um, they actually, they wanted me on disability when I was 19. They said I was done. And it, it was really, really difficult battle. A lot of pain. Oh, my goodness. It was horrendous. The, the therapies, the torture is the only word that comes to mind. I went through a, a lot 150 injections of, of like basically sugar syrup once a month, put my body through a car accident once a month on the premise that your body works the hardest to heal itself when the injury is fresh. And mm. they said it was the only chance I had at having a normal life again. And, you know, so I could barely move for a week and it was very painful to move for the next two weeks. And I'd feel kind of okay for a week. And then I had to go back. It was mm. nine months on six months off, nine months on six months off. I did three series of that before mm. they said I was done. Uh, the, the only thing that gave me any relief from the pain it, and that was was massage. But I hadn't intended to become a massage therapist. That was decided for me by, by God, obviously. Um, I had taken a job while I was in college 
as a as a therapy aide at a nursing home is one of the one of the greatest jobs I ever worked. Um, my job was to go get patients from their rooms, and I got to help with with treatments and occupational therapy is what I intended to what I intended to study. Mm -hmm. it, it was it was so incredible to be able to teach somebody how to how to walk again how to how to live again you know somebody who never thought they'd be able to regain their their ability to live independently after a stroke or a, you know major injury it it was so fulfilling and it was so amazing to be able to to change somebody's life in such a gigantic way it was everything so I changed majors. I was studying. Um, I had put three and a half years into studying marketing and communications at University oh, wow. of Akron with the intent to to be a pharmaceutical sales rep. Oh, okay. I was working for a surgeon and running all his non medical businesses, and and he wanted to help guide me in, into a, you know a lucrative field, a good yeah strong income, and I just you know God bless. God bless them for all that they do, um, but it's just not. It, it, it wasn't hands on enough for me, you know. Yeah, I didn't no. want to just make a difference through medication. I wanted to actually, yeah, yeah muscular like. I wanted yeah. to get in there and fix them, you know. I wanted to see what I was doing was making a difference, and so I, I transferred to Stark State. Uh, with the intent to, to study occupational therapy. And I, math is a tough one for me. It's a mm -hmm. really tough one. God, I hate it. Oh God. <laughs> well, I had taken this class. Um, and I, mind you, I, I avoided math like the plague all my life. It's a, it's a struggle for me, but mm -hmm. I saw this music sound and physics and I saw, you know, all I saw was music and sound. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that'll be cool. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I've taken a couple of acoustics oh, classes. My I literally, just... I cried through the entire semester. I got an A. I had to have, I had to keep an A if <laughs> yeah. I wanted to keep my, <laughs> yeah. you know, my grants and stuff. I had to, <laughs> I cried my way through. It was crazy. I was in, in a lecture room with 150 students. We had four different professors, the first four classes, and we ended up with the most difficult one to understand. He was a, a Russian grad student, and his nines were the same <laughs> as a G, but but the equations went so high that G was in. It was yeah. really hard. I sat in the front row, and I literally, I would just sob like, oh my goodness, like I'm never going to get this. But I did. You know, that's, that's the, the cool thing about you know, about math and music, you know, it's all just a different part of your brain and, and you, you yeah. have to work to stimulate it and to, they to click into yeah. that. But yeah, once you, once you flip that switch, it's there, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> but you got to work that muscle to keep it functional. Yeah. And so when I transferred to, to Stark State, I had just taken that class and, and so, you know, I took placement testing and, and I tested out of the requirements the prerequisite requirements for math oh, nice. <laughs> because I had just finished that class. Well, I got all the way through my prereqs and I'm just about to start the program. Well, they lost my test results. Oh, what the hell? I know. They what? lost that. Like, how do you do that? So I had to retake this <laughs> math test and now I haven't taken a, a oh. pencil to a math problem in, in two years. It was gone. It was gone, so I didn't pass this one. So, so then I had get I got bumped off the list. It was two and a half year waiting list. I got bumped off the list, and I called the dean of the school. I'm like, what on how, earth am I? I'm out of classes. Lose? I can't just stop. Lose? Well, irrelevant. There's nothing I could do about that. But mm. now I've got I've got to I've got to do something. I can't wait another two and a half years to start this program. So that's yeah. how I ended up in massage therapy, mm. and it turned out I, I'm just I'm very very good at my job and and it's awesome it's awesome to fix people and make their lives <laughs> better and easier and happier and more productive it's so cool to be a part of that it's such a privilege and, and it's a physical change too i mean it's not just oh, like it's, it's everything not, yeah, yeah it's it's complete manipulation of of, of up the body systems that's why the testing is so intense it's 
it's important to know what you're doing. It's very powerful, very powerful mode of treatment. It's it's incredible. But I would have never landed in that profession had if you didn't if you didn't if they didn't lose your test. If they didn't lose my test. And, and I wouldn't have even been interested in it had I not found so so much benefit from that therapy for for myself and my own healing. Yeah. I definitely forget for me. I definitely forget the calculus I learned oh my two goodness. semesters ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I definitely forget it all. Like, yeah. It's so cool, oh, though, when oh. you figure it out, when you oh, get to yeah. that point. But, oh, my yeah. goodness. When, once you forget it, it's hard yeah. to get back. Right. You know it or you don't know it. Mm. You've done your homework or you have not done your homework. Yeah. <laughs> There's no faking it in math. Oh, yeah. You got to keep it fresh. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. 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 It's 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 almost the same with music. Yeah. Where you, I mean, if you don't pick up an instrument for a while, you yeah. kind of, you kind of lose some things. Yeah. It's just like, it's, yeah, music and science. You know, or reading know, music. Like, oh, yeah. man. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Boy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Reading, I could, <laughs> I could read alto clef, tenor clef, bass clef. I could read all that like three right? years ago. Now I can only yeah. read bass and treble. Yeah. Treble. As, as well as <laughs> oh yeah i'm even having a tough time with that <laughs> at this point you know i could i could read yeah. and you know sight read play the piano and you know f- yeah. flute i flute was my first instrument i just, you know set first chair in sophomore year i was i was yeah. on you know but so was that your first instrument then mm-hmm. okay i wanted to play the saxophone but it was too expensive we couldn't afford it and my mom was playing in a band with um, it was Danny Pellegrini and the U.S. Mint Band, and she had an, another woman in the band, Kathy, Kathy Trich, and she played the flute. And she was so kind to sell one of her flutes to my mom on payments from the band money. Okay. And so I got to be in the band, and it was really cool to find out later in life that. Those finger positions are actually the same. Mm-hmm. So I very much look forward to having a saxophone one day. Same My, with clarinet. Really? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that either. That's really, really exciting. Oh, yeah. They're very... Well, I think cool. there's a small difference, but they're very similar. It's like flute oh, to saxophone. Goodness. It's There's an octave key on the... Yeah. There's two octave keys down on the saxophone. I did not know that. That's well, cool. I'm not sure about any... I know tenor saxophone does, but I'm not sure about alto or berry or. So it's not based on on breath control. It's a, an actual key. Yeah. To change octaves. Cool. Mm. Yep. Fun same fact. for a, same for a trombone. I think. I think. A trom- well, a trombone is a slide. So yeah. I don't understand how that. Oh. There's oh, you're talking key. about there's a, a. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. I, <laughs> no, I see what you're saying. Don't quote me on that though. <laughs> So were what what artists were you listening to growing up and have have they kind of stayed the same or have you branched out more? I've just expanded but but they'll always be a part of me. Elvis Presley. Elvis was huge, huge in my in my life and my world. Like I said, my mom played in a band was a, an Elvis Presley um, tribute band. It was awesome. I didn't. I didn't know any. I didn't know anything. Um, yeah, I lost my words there, but <laughs> I. I don't even know what I'm saying. It's. it's <laughs> oh. You get carried away in the memories of it. It was so cool. It's the you power know? of Elvis. Yeah. The. <laughs> it, yeah, the costumes and the glitz of it all. It was so cool because. The backing band also served as the opening band. So my mom and Kathy, they would have these beautiful, these beautiful costumes that they would wear, and um, you know, and they'd they'd be the the full on background vocalist with the you know with the mm-hmm. synchronized choreography, and that it was just it was really something. Huh. Yeah, I, I, he, I, he he always had those oh, yeah. flashy. Oh, the jumpsuits. Yeah. You know, I went to, um, I got to go to Las Vegas a few years back. It was, it was my first time there. And I'll never forget it, flying into Las Vegas at night. It's incredible the way 
those lights sparkle Mm -hmm. and glitter. And I thought that must have been where they came up with the inspiration for Elvis's famous jumpsuits. Yeah. I, you know, I'm curious. I, that's my theory. I feel like it's the truth. I can see that. I feel like that's what's up. <laughs> I think so. I yeah, think right? It just makes so much sense. And I had the, the craziest thing happen a few years back. I was at Jersey's on Fulton Road down in Canton, and I'm sitting down for lunch, and I don't know how the conversation got around to it. But it turned out the gentleman sitting next to me having lunch at the bar as well, had played the saxophone for Elvis Presley. Wow. In Can- Yeah, in Canton, Ohio. He actually, he's the guy that taught Matt Quarry. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So cool. Full circle. Yeah. Dang. It's wow. incredible. That's funny. I love, yeah. I love Matt. Yeah, he's so great. He's a really, really great guy. He's really cool. Mm-hmm. Super cool, super talented. Yeah. He's a fantastic person. So I got one more question for you. So do you have any tips for any musicians just starting out? Yeah. Don't be, don't be afraid. Don't hold back. Don't be scared. <laughs> don't, don't let yourself have any reason or worry about judgment. Just... just have fun. You know, um, when I told my mom as a young girl that I wanted to, to be a singer like her someday, she told me, she told me something very valuable as a vocalist. It it was very important advice and, and it had been installed in her by my father who had put her on, on her first stage. God bless him for that. Um, She said, only listen to a song performed by somebody else well enough to get the gist of it. Because you never want to sound like anybody else. And that's something that a lot of people don't understand because, you know, they want, they want to copycat what they're hearing. They want to emulate exactly what has been done by the artist that they're that they're doing a cover of. And that's not how you present yourself artistically. You know, music yeah. is about love and it's about expression of yourself. And the only way you can give a true performance is to give all of you. So, so don't listen to a song trying to sound just like anybody else. Just just listen to it just enough so that you understand what they're doing and then find your own way. Yeah. That's an interesting point because all those all those jazz singers back in the day, they were only singing covers. I mean, yeah. And they would have their own spin to it. Yeah. So that's an, yeah, that's a cool point to bring up. Mhm. And something else, something that I wish I had understood sooner is <laughs> You know, there are only so many notes. <laughs> there are only so many notes. What, there's 13? 12. 12, it is 12. Yeah, I think. I yeah. Think, yeah, you're right. But, you know, there are only, <laughs> but there are only 12 notes, and there are only so the many combinations of, of what you can do. <laughs> I, no, I think you're right. 13. I think it's 12. I don't know. <laughs> At any rate, there's not that many, you know? So I put all this pressure on myself to to find these completely unique melodies and these com- completely new uh, phrasing patterns and such to write a song. That's why I worked mm-hmm. so hard. Yeah. And, and, you know, now that I've done all that, all that homework, I listen to a song. And this part's really cool, actually. I listen to a song and I can hear all of the different artists that have influenced them. Yeah. You know, I can hear just little bites of a thousand different songs and artists that are in that in that artist's repertoire <laughs> because you can't help but bring it back. It's really neat. Yeah. It's really neat to understand music that way, but you know, it can be just simple. You can just you can just let yourself 
play a, a melody that's already been done, you know, or an, a chord progression that's already been done, and and keep it simple. Yeah. You can just make your own new set of words over, you know, tell your own story over top of what's already there. It doesn't have to be so complicated. I wish I hadn't been so hard on myself because I think people would have really enjoyed hearing what I had to say all along. Yeah. Just going to keep it simple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You got, you have any, any, any projects you want to, you want to shout out or? Well, um, yeah, I, I guess. I, I um, I'm really excited to get back to the stage, and I've had a whole lot of people asking and, and waiting for quite some time for me to come back out and play, and I'm so ready. I'm so ready to come back out and and show everybody how hard I've been working and, and really just lift their spirits up and just give them a good day. Yeah. <laughs> so it's definitely the time to do. Yeah. Like, so everybody need, needs some. Every, anybody needs some musicians to it's play like, a party or a, yeah, you know, a gig. I got Dallas and I are, are doing a a duo thing, and um, we're gonna bring out as many musicians a, as the gig calls for. You know, you just gotta pay oh, enough jam. money for them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I'm ready to play. That's awesome. You guys are doing that. That's, oh yeah, that's I'm cool. so excited. Especially after last year, it's like yeah, it's like, come on. <laughs> yeah, well, it's been a long time. I, I've been focused on so many other things. I was working. Um, actually, I was <laughs> shame on me for for not having gotten this really cool assignment done yet. But I'll be I'll be really pleased to present it being with it having been done so properly. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin Shirley. He's an incredible producer. He produced Journey, Dream Theater, Silver Chair, Spider-Man 3 soundtrack, Joe Bonamassa. Mm -hmm. He's legendary. And he had asked for he had asked for 10 songs, scratch tracks. And and he had asked that that our second meeting, um, it was in Charlotte. First one was in Nashville, and I had given him a, a demo and and then we ske scheduled the next meeting was in, in Charlotte then, and he decided he would work with me, which was real, that was just an amazing, amazing invitation. Um, but yeah, <laughs> we, we go out to, do we have a minute? Oh, yeah. yeah so, so we go out, my, my girl and I, um, Krista, she's, she's my, my <laughs> sweet, she's my angel, that girl's awesome. And, um, she and I had gone. We were we were in Charleston for we were <laughs> we were working on some things with Ben Vegan and the Holy City Hooligans, and took a break to go up to Charlotte to meet with Kevin. and And we go meet him at the hotel bar, and he says, "Here, I'd like to introduce you to my friend." And his friend turns around and he says, "Hi, I'm the Bruce from the Maiden." <laughs> I'm like, "Shut." Uh, of course, yeah. He's he's in like, he's like a neon, neon wrinkled up swim shorts. He's in like old ratty tennis shoes. He's just, you know, he's a, a, a crazy like Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> he's the Bruce from the main. We ended up, um, we ended up he and I, hosting an impromptu jam at this corner bar in downtown Charlotte. It was incredible <laughs> because we're sitting there. We go out, and I'm like, you know, I'd like to have a cigarette. And, and the Bruce says, I'll, I'll go out with you. So we're sitting there at the table. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, you know, I got to tell you, this is crazy. I'm sitting here with rock and roll royalty. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a guitar. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is crazy. Timing. This is crazy. <laughs> and I'm not kidding you. It was like 20 seconds later, this kid walks by with a guitar. I'm like, Bruce, check it out. I go, I go <laughs> running down. I'm like, dude, I'm like, dude, hey, you want to come? I got you. Got to come meet my friend. You want to come meet? Come, come jail with. And I grab this kid, and he stops dead in his tracks, <laughs> jaw on the floor, white as a ghost. Do you know who that is? Oh yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm like, you want to come play? Don't. Yeah. So he comes over, and we start playing. We're we're having a great time. I'm like, man, we just need some percussion. One five minutes later, kid walks by with a cajon. You can't make this. Shit up. That's funny. It's a true story. Oh my god, we ended up having they they were having the um, 
the American Idol auditions were right down the street. Oh, okay. Yeah, that same weekend. And um, oh, it's crazy. We ended up with like 50 <laughs> people is, gathered people around. By. Yeah, so we ended up with this whole group oh of people. The bar owners are so tickled pink. They're they're like filling up our table with with giant <laughs> things of beer. Kevin, Kevin's like, I'll take two from the big stick. That's how he orders uh-huh. the beer. It's funny as can be. But we had so much. I couldn't drink any. We couldn't drink anymore. We're giving them away to the bums on the street. Like, Here, have some drinks. It was crazy. <laughs> it was insane. Oh, it was, oh my goodness. And you know, we never took a single photograph we don't have a single picture can you believe it you guys were having too much fun though oh my goodness it was incredible and you know what's crazy though is he had invited me what an honor and what a privilege and i wish i could have been in in two places at once but he had invited me to be his personal guest he had a sold out arena show in charlotte and he invited me to be his personal guest for that show but but i had been under the impression that we were that I was going to be a part of this show um, back in Charleston oh. with Ben Fagan and the Holy City Hooligans, it was just a little pub gig, but you were. But yeah. I, but I, he, you know, he's a Grammy Award winner. He's a brilliant artist, and I was really just super, super excited about that opportunity. I only had a very short period of time to do all of these things, and. Yeah, you know, in hindsight, I whew, I really missed out on on a brilliant opportunity there, but I had a great time just the same. It was really cool. But That's yeah, amazing. He, yeah. But uh, Kevin was waiting on my homework, and I am um, I had Grammy Award winners all over the place ready and excited to work with me to help bring this album to life, and um, I had to kind of take a sidestep. I would because I had been approached to work on this infomercial for Evil Knievel's pain relief job. I was working with his son, Robbie Knievel. Mm. And I um, I spent, a, it, it should have only taken two mi- months, but I spent a, about a year on that project, helping to reformulate the, um, the product to make it as great as it could be, you know, mm. with the essential, it's like BioFreeze, only incredibly, oh, just way better because we put a whole lot of love into that. Yeah. And, um, you know, between he and his father, they had broken more bones than exist in the human body, and this is what they used to get better. This stuff's incredible. But having been a massage therapist, I had I had a lot of understanding and insight that that made it possible to really come up with a great launch for it. Mm-hmm. So you know, I showed them the the best ways to distribute you know like roll-ons and sprays and you know you get that stuff on your fingers you can wash your hands a thousand times you go touch your contact and it burns like crazy yeah but with biofreeze that's because they (laughs) use such um they use it's a really great product but they use you know cheap fairly cheap essential oils so you know they got to use like a tablespoon in their product whereas we use like the finest most potent you could find so we'd have like drop it's more sensitive <laughs> right so you know so yeah. it washed off easily but at, at any rate um that took me aside and all <laughs> hell broke loose in my life and whole lot of whole lot of crazy things pulled me to the side but i know it was just because i needed to find myself as an artist i wasn't ready yet Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's important to, I, to, to I, notice. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's important I, to notice about yeah, yourself. I feel that God had more lessons for me to learn before I could create the album and the music that I was meant to, because all of these brilliant opportunities I was telling you about another on the way in here, um, everything happens for a reason, just as it's meant to. Mm-hmm. And, I feel that the most important part and the most amazing part of being an artist is the ability to touch someone's soul, to make somebody feel less alone. I, I feel like that's the, the most incredible, the most incredible thing that I could ever do with my life, especially as an artist. That's why it's so important to me because it makes sense of all those feel bads. It's how I can say thank you from the bottom of my heart for even the worst. And there have been some really bad things that have happened. 
And I am so thankful for every one of them because there is not a soul that I can't look straight in the eyes and, and, and know. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah. And, and people feel that. Mm-hmm. So now I'm ready. Now I can sing and it'll matter because it's true and it's honest and there's nothing fake or forced or, you know, I get yeah. to just speak from my heart and anyone who cares to listen or feel anything from it, they will because it's real. So yeah. I'm ready now and I'm excited about it. So that's why music therapy is, is a, is a, it's a it's growing, really powerful. it's a growing thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad that, I'm glad that they're giving it the respect and acknowledgement that it deserves, you know? Oh yeah, definitely. Well, uh, you can find me on Instagram at Davey underscore Squires and on Facebook, Davey Squires Music. And you can check out all the past episodes of the podcast on dsquires.com slash squiresstation. Thank you so much, Tina, for coming on. And it was a pleasure. Thank you some, so much. Telling some really cool stories. <laughs> Damn. Oh, I got stories for days. Damn. <laughs> Damn.